Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Today, we're at this time, we have the pleasure of speaking with uh, two friends from a company called AmeriCase. Basically, all types of transportation. You got to get it from here to there. You want to make sure it doesn't explode. You want to make sure you get there in one piece. These guys make cases for it, right? Or you don't know what you don't know. So at one point, do companies need to get in touch with you and start thinking about storage and transportation? So from a supply chain perspective, they need to be thinking all the way back to their manufacturer, right? right? So whoever is manufacturing their battery, you know, it's not simple to say, hey, our responsibility starts at when the pack when the lithium ion shows on the back dock. Right. They should really start at their manufacturer, right? Because as soon as it leaves the manufacturer, the bullseye's on everybody. Right. Right. So how do we keep lithium ion safe uh, during transport from the OEM to your facility, whether it's a data center? Colo, Edge, whatever that facility may be. That's really where we need to be engaged from when you're starting to build your technology. So as soon as you get your specs for your battery, that's where you should be calling us in. Because again, we want to be there to understand what is the risk. The challenge for a lot of technology, not just computer technology, but a lots of things like, say for example, electric vehicles, um, is having a battery system that's as efficient as possible and high power. And that's where the high power aspect comes in. That's where the danger comes in from lithium ion. It's a great battery source, but it's also relatively dangerous. I want to be clear that batteries are inherently safe. Oh, sure. But it's, it is the what if. And the batteries that they are replacing, these big diesel gens with these battery backup units are at the server level, if something were to go wrong, if during transit they were damaged, or there was a flaw in the manufacturing process in and of itself, and you were to have a thermal event, they are quite volatile when they go off. So you need to make sure you can mitigate that risk in all cycles of the process. Now, do, do you also have to consider when they're in place? Is that something that you think about too, or is it mostly when they're in storage or transit? Well, you definitely have to think of them when they're in place. I mean, uh, DDR, damage defective recalled batteries, right? Oh, sure. So if a BBU is in a, in a rack or in, uh, in a device, that could go bad. Right. So what, so what do you do at that point? Uh, you know, part of our custom solutions is not only just dealing with what they call as on-spec batteries, but also off-spec. Right. The stuff that's going bad, right? So we actually have, a spe America has actually has a special permit to be able to transport oh, nice. those DDR batteries back to a recycler or back to a lab or an OEM lab for analysis and diagnosis. And yeah, again, and without without inconveniencing the customer exactly. at all. Right, makes perfect all sense. All you do is you slap a FedEx label on that case and it's ready to go. And I, I understand you're involved in several boards I in terms of uh, UN national grade and, and national level and world level uh, standards? Yes, sir. So, I mean, AmeriCase has to be on the forefront of what's going on. I mean, from the fire safety codes that are coming down that are being adopted in 2024 that are already in New York and California right now, um, all the way to the regulations that are going to be pressed upon everybody that deals with lithium-ion batteries. One of them is the UN uh, uh, subcommittee on the reclassification of lithium-ion and metal cells. Right now, when you talk about lithium uh, ion cells, it's basically a battery in equipment, out of equipment. Equipment is it uh, lithium ion or lithium metal? Oh, or okay. in you know the dangerous goods world, so let's say explosives, there could be a thousand different categories of something between TNT and fireworks, right. between alcohol and pure 100% uh, liquid uh, nitrogen. All these things are categories to understand how to transport them safely. The battery world hasn't caught up to that, so we're writing right. regulations to say okay, this battery might be very inherently safe and it doesn't need much packaging, where this one is very volatile when it goes into rapid disassembly or thermal runaway, and you need to have a very robust packaging to guarantee that it can contain it both on transit and road, rail, sea, and even potentially air. So we are writing those regulations right now. And then we're also on the SAEG 27 board where we're actually coming up with packaging standards to allow batteries back on airplanes uh -huh. outside of equipment. So it gives the consumers more uh, lenience for shipping their batteries for just-in-time delivery. We're right now, you can't ship a battery under over 30% state of charge outside of equipment on an airplane, commercial oh, no or, or any other. Right? And uh, again, are these expensive? Just a, a quick final question. You know, consider what do you think? You know, uh, a good example is one of our uh, clients was a cloud computing company. They they needed this because they never built data centers for lithium ion storage. It was going to cost them about two hundred thousand dollars to retrofit a warehouse for lithium ion. Oh my God! Our case is a thousand, a couple thousand bucks. Right. So the return on investment is, you know, in in the days and weeks, uh, not even close to the months, and not even going to years. Right.